Hi, and thank you for joining me for another video. And friends, this week's Parsha is Parashat Lech Lecha. And friends, we're in the beginning. Here's where it all began. The beginning of what we call Judaism. And friends, the way we understand this Parsha, this portion, really gives us a glimpse on how we will understand the rest of Torah and purposeful existence in itself. And friends, I'm speaking about Abraham being called upon by the Almighty. A topic that even the rabbis in the Talmud had many different opinions on. Opinions that dwelled mainly on two notions that were, was it truly free will, intellectual conviction that made Abraham great, or was it predestination or some sort of superior bloodline? For example, one Midrash states that he was called a Hebrew because he physically crossed over the river Euphrates, acquiring, again, the name Hebrew, which means one who crosses over. And yet another Midrash states that he was called a Hebrew because he was a descendant of Aver from the word which also is related to the word Hebrew, Ivri. And friends, this is a Hushkafic issue that we struggle with even today. An issue that other offshoots of Judaism like Islam and Christianity do not struggle with as much. And that's the notion of intrinsic value. If it was ultimately Abraham who chose God or was it God who chose Abraham? And the answer, my friends, I believe is scattered all through Torah countless times. But only displayed in a fashion that only the truly ethical can see. And you're probably thinking, what makes this an ethical or a moral issue? Well, friends. Just look out the window at the Jewish world today and take a look at what plagues us. Notions like insularity, exclusivity, chosenness, blood superiority, intrinsic worth, my friends. Notions that weekly we debunk using nothing but the words of this Torah alone. And you wonder, how can one narrative produce so many different opinions? And friends, the problem is not with the narrative. The problem is not with the Torah. No, my friends, the problem is with us. Because we have violated the command of Loto Sefalave Loti Gramenenu. In other words, we have violated the command of not adding or taking away from the Torah and have shared the Torah's philosophical authority with later works. Works that take the simple meaning of the narrative and give it a spiritual, ethnically beneficial twist, which ultimately ends up turning curses into blessings and blessings into curses. And friends, how do we know what's correct? Well, to answer this question, all we have to do is refer to what we read so far, from Parashat Bereshit to Parashat Noah and what we're reading now in Parashat Lechacha, and understand what were the defining ethical characteristics in the character so far, from Adam Arishon to the generation of the flood, to Noah, to those who constructed the Tower of Babel in last week's Parsha. In other words, what made someone usable or unusable, righteous or wicked before the Almighty? Think about it. Because any way you look at it, the answer is evident that what defines us and these characters is only how we choose or how they chose good over evil. And that is precisely what Abraham was chosen or appointed for in this Parsha. Because unlike everyone who hears the voice of God in their lives and chooses the natural and the destructive, Abraham heard and obeyed. So in that sense, one can even say that it was Abraham who chose the Almighty and not the other way around. Because ideally, it is Hashem who chooses all of us individually, and ultimately the decision is left up to us to either obey or disobey. Which is why I never liked the term coined by many irreligious Jews today, the notion of being chosen. Because honestly, the notion really implies choosing for no purpose at all. Just perhaps because something is there. Which is why I always felt that in this context, the word Bahar could really be better translated as appointed, which means actually chosen for a purpose, instead of just chosen for no reason. Which is also clearly seen on how after the Parsha, after Hashem finishes speaking to Abraham, he then immediately begin testing him, seeing if he has what it takes to go to the next level. And friends, this is how the story really hits home. Why? Because we all get the same chance, we all have gotten the same opportunity to stay where we're at, how we're living, or to pick up and go where the Almighty wants us to be. Which if you think about it, it's virtually the exact call he made to the Hebrews in Egypt. And friends, it's the same call he makes to us even today. 
whether we want to choose him or we rather choose our selfish desires. And it's interesting that although in this Parsha it speaks about his future descendants dwelling and getting redeemed from Egypt, we know that many of the Hebrews stayed behind in Egypt. And also that the Hebrews left with a mixed multitude. So it still has nothing, nothing to do with blood but obedience. This is what the Torah is teaching us. And my friends, I'm not making this up. However, you really have to read this Torah in context to really understand it. It doesn't work any other way. In other words, the Torah is not meant to be understood verse by verse or even chapter by chapter, but rather the context should always be on one mind and asking ourselves, what's the big picture? Which is why the Jewish world has always been split with what was the true beginning of our Amuna? Was it Lech Lech or was it Matan Torah? Was it Abraham choosing the Almighty or the Israelites accepting Torah and Har Sinai? Which is why we see that Abraham knew what God had in mind from the beginning. He knew that there had to be something more than men having to struggle to find God and understand God for himself. Which is why the Almighty took his name, Abraham, which literally means the exalted father, and changed it to Abraham, which means father of many nations. Actually, some people think that when it's speaking about father of many nations, that in some way this is referring to Abraham. My friends, not at all. Because Abraham was only the emulation of what was actually happening on a macro level. Which is what it ultimately means to walk in the ways of God. To do as he does. And to think like he does. Which is what Abraham is beginning to do here. In other words, the father here is our father. The everlasting father who through Abraham and his descendants would be known as the world's father or the world's God. And this is why as we read the Torah from portion to portion, we're witnessing a systematic ethical progress from Adam to Noah to finally Abraham, each one outdoing the previous. Humanity moving in a collective manner to one ethical final goal, which is what we call the Messianic Age. And also, friends, here in the beginning of the Parsha, where it states that Abraham left with Sarah and Lot and the souls that they created in Haran, regarding these souls, virtually all the Mephorshim, all the Torah commentators teach that this refers to all the converts that Abraham and Sarah gathered through active proselytizing. That's right, my friends, proselytizing, a word and a concept that is not only shunned in the Jewish world today, but actually modern day Jews go as far as to even discourage people from coming in or under the wings of the Shekhinah. When even Maimonides ties in this story of Abraham and Sarah proselytizing as one of the ways to fulfill the third mitzvah of the Torah, the mitzvah of loving the Creator. He states that the way you love the Almighty is by making others love Him also, just like Abraham and Sarah did, by actively proselytizing in this Parsha. To the point that even the Gemara of Zorah, um, Daftat, states that the age of Torah began with Abraham proselytizing in Haran. Heck, my friends, I'm not making this up. And this, my friends, is really why Noah was passed over and why Abraham was the one appointed, because this is teaching us an important lesson that being righteous means nothing if you do not try to include others with you. In other words, during the story of the flood, at least by the plain narrative of the text, we don't see Noah try to do anything to change the tide. But as we will read in next week, Parsha, we see Abraham pleading with the Almighty to be merciful with the residents of Stone. And then, friends, the Parsha goes on to tell us that Abraham was circumcised at the age of 99. And Chazal wondered what was the purpose of his age being included in this statement. And they answered that it was for no other reason than to tell the reader that it is never too late to enter the Jewish people. And my friends, if you're hearing me today and you want to take that big step, and not just hear, but obey the words of the Almighty, telling you to pick up and go to where He wants you to be. Today, my friends, is your opportunity to change your life and change your line. For more information on becoming a full Torah Jew, my friends, please visit DoorDea.com. Thank you.